Good day, everyone. Today's topic is covalent bonding. All right, we start with the definition of chemical bonds first. Chemical bonds are formed when atoms interact to complete their valence electrons to be stable. As we all know, atoms only interact and atoms only form bonds because they want to become stable. Covalent bonds have two major characteristics. The first one is that it is formed or they're formed between two nonmetals. Okay, again, they're formed between two nonmetals. Nonmetals, again, are those elements found at the right side of your periodic table, those elements that are not very good conductors. Now, another thing that you need to remember about your covalent bonds is that the electrons are shared, and these are represented by lines. Each line means one shared pair of electrons. Now, what are the steps in showing covalent bonds? The first step that you have here is to write the Lewis dot structure of each atom. Now remember that in writing the Lewis dot structure, you only check the number of valence electrons. Valence electrons are the electrons in your outermost shell. You only check the number of valence electrons, which corresponds to the group number of your elements. This only applies to your group A elements, not including your transition metals. Now step number two, pair up electrons to satisfy the octet rule. Your atom should have eight valence electrons to satisfy the octet rule to become stable. Now remember that hydrogen and helium can only have two electrons for them to become stable. Rule number three, substitute shared electrons by lines. So one line again would mean one pair of shared electrons. Since in your covalent bonding, electrons are not transferred, but electrons are only shared. Let's take a look at one example. If you have H2O, from our lesson yesterday, you know that in this compound here, we have two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. Again, we have two atoms of hydrogen and only one atom of oxygen. So the first step that we need to do again is to write the Lewis dot structures of the atoms that we have. Now, hydrogen belongs in group 1A, so that means it should only have one valence electron. Okay, so these should be the Lewis dot structure for hydrogen. Now, since we have two atoms of this, we also need to write two hydrogen showing their Lewis dot structure. Now, the second element we have here is oxygen. As you check in your periodic table, oxygen belongs to group 6A, so that means it should have six valence electrons. So this should be the Lewis dot structure for oxygen. Now remember, I told you that when you write the dots, which represent the valence electrons of your, your element, you should start from top, right, bottom, left. Then you start pairing them up so that we can have some uniformity. Okay, so again, top, right, bottom, left before we start pairing them up. So for oxygen, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now we go to the Lewis dot structure of our compound. Now, as you can see here, your element oxygen only has six valence electrons. How many more electrons does it need for it to become stable, for it to satisfy the octet rule? We know that eight minus six would be two. So we still need to give it two electrons for it to become stable. Now, each of your hydrogen atom here has one valence electron. So that means this electron here can be shared with oxygen, and this other electron here with your hydrogen atom can also be shared with oxygen this side here. Okay, so if you take a look at the Lewis dot structure again of your compound, it would be like this. Okay, so your hydrogen's electron here is shared with oxygen. Another hydrogen electron here from one hydrogen atom is also shared with oxygen. So these electrons here, these, these pairs of electrons here are being shared. So that means if you try to count the number of electrons for oxygen now, there should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oxygen now satisfies the octet rule, so we say oxygen is now stable. Now what about this hydrogen atom? This hydrogen atom is sharing one electron with oxygen. So this hydrogen atom would now have one and two. 
It has two valence electrons now. It has two electrons in its outermost shell. So we say that this is now stable. Now what about this other hydrogen atom? This one also shares one electron with your atom of oxygen there. So that's one and two. So that means this hydrogen atom is also stable. So all of your atoms now are stable. Okay, so that's the Lewis dot structure for your entire compound. Now for your structural formula, the next formula that you have, you need to substitute the pairs of valence electrons that are being shared with lines. So each line again, according to your rule, each line would mean one pair of valence electrons. So which pairs of valence electrons are being shared? This is shared. This is also, sh also shared. This is also shared. So that means for your structure formula, you'll have this. Okay, so you have one pair of shared valence electrons here. You also have another pair of shared valence electrons. And you have two lone pairs of electrons here. When you say lone pairs, these are pairs that are not being shared with the other atoms. These pairs only belong to oxygen. Okay, so this should be your structural formula. Again, the lines there represent a pair of shared electrons. Okay, so one pair of shared electrons. Now the next formula that you have is your chemical formula, which shows us the number of atoms in your chemical compound. And this should be your chemical formula. Okay, so again, the Lewis that structure of the compound is this. This is a structural formula, substituting lines to your shared pairs of electrons. And this is your chemical formula, which shows us the number of atoms in your compound. Now we go to your guided practice. It says here, complete the table using the given elements. Number one, you have CH4. And number two, you have NH3. Now CH4, for CH4, as you can see, and based on our rules of counting the number of atoms, you have one carbon atom and you have four atoms of hydrogen. Now we write the Lewis dot structure of each atom. For carbon, if you check your periodic table, carbon belongs to group 4A. So that means it should have 1, 2, 3, and 4 valence electrons. So this should be the Lewis dot structure for carbon. 1, 2, 3, 4 valence electrons because it belongs to group 4A. Now, as you can see in our formula, we have four atoms of hydrogen. And hydrogen, again, belong to group 1A. Okay, hydrogen belong to group 1A. So we have only one valence electron for each hydrogen atom. Okay, so there's only one dot because it belongs to group 1A. We have four hydrogen atoms because based on our formula, we have a subscript of four for hydrogen. So that means we have four atoms of hydrogen in this formula that we have here. Now again, remember covalent bonds are formed between nonmetals. As you can remember, hydrogen, even if we see it in group 1A, hydrogen is an example of a nonmetal. It is only placed there because of its atomic number. Okay, so again, both carbon and hydrogen are nonmetals, so we call the bond formed between them as a covalent bond. Now, as you can see here, your carbon atom only has four valence electrons. So for it to satisfy the octet rule, it needs four more valence electrons. Octet rule again, which means it should have eight valence electrons or eight electrons in, in its outermost shell. So basically, you need to share this electron of hydrogen to this side of your carbon atom, this other electron to this side, this other electron to this side, and the last one to the remaining side there. So your Lewis dot structure for the compound should look like this. Okay, and those pairs of electrons at four sides are, are all shared electrons. Okay, so if you count the number of electrons for carbon now, there should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now carbon is stable. Now for each atom of hydrogen, you also have one and two, one and two, one and two, one and two. So each, each atoms now are all stable. Now we go to your structural formula. Now remember we said your structural formula, you substitute your shared pair of electrons with the lines. Now this pair of electron is shared, this pair of electron is shared, this is also shared, and the last one is also, the last pair is also shared. So structural formula should look like this. 
Okay, so this is one pair of shared electron, another pair of shared electron, another pair of shared electron, and the last pair of shared electron. Now, chemical formula, again, should just be the same as the given formula that we have. Okay, so that's the chemical formula that you have for CH4, which is methane. Now, we go to the second example that we have. According to your chemical compound, or to your chemical compounds formula, there's one atom of nitrogen and three atoms of hydrogen. Okay, so nitrogen there belongs to group 5A. It should have five valence electrons. So for nitrogen, Lewis, that structure is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we have three atoms of hydrogen. Hydrogen, again, belongs to group 1A. So it should only have one valence electron. And we should have three atoms of hydrogen. Okay, so that's three atoms of hydrogen, each with one valence electron. Now, as you can see here, nitrogen only has five valence electrons. It needs three more for it to become stable, for it to satisfy the octet rule. So this means that this electron of hydrogen here should be shared with this electron of nitrogen. This should be shared with this, and the last one should be shared at the other side. Okay, so your Lewis dot structure for the chemical compound should look like this. Okay, now we have already placed all the hydrogen atoms at those sides where we need to place them, where we share the electrons. Okay, so that means by looking at nitrogen now, nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons now. It is now stable. It has satisfied the octet rule. Now, this hydrogen atom already has one, two. This has one, two. This has one, two electrons. They are all stable. Okay, now as you can see, this pair is shared between hydrogen and nitrogen. This also shared between nitrogen and hydrogen. This is shared with nitrogen and hydrogen. But this is a lone pair of electrons. That means this is not shared by any hydrogen atoms. This only belongs to nitrogen. So for your structural formula, it should look like this. Okay, so this is a shared pair of electrons. Shared pair of electrons, shared pair of electron, and one pair of lone electrons, or one lone pair. Okay? So again, your lone pair are those pairs that are not being shared with another atom. This only belongs to nitrogen. So your chemical formula, again, would just be the same as a given formula there. That should be NH3. All right? So that ends our lesson today. Make sure that you answer your work in Google Classroom. Good luck and stay safe.